Hey guys, it's Big Mike, and like always, I'd like to thank you for being here today. Today we have Tyler Yell from FXCM and Raymond Stein from Ninja Trader. Uh, it's mostly an FXCM presentation, but uh, Raymond from Ninja Trader is going to be available to answer any Ninja Trader specific questions. As we go through the presentation, we're going to cover the FXCM and Ninja Trader compatibility. We're going to cover Trading Spot Forex versus Futures regulations, uh, ECNs, DMAs, and other Forex terms, talk about transaction costs, margins, and account minimums, and how to get started with NinjaTrader and FXCM. And also an interesting note is that FXCM will provide a NinjaTrader license for free once you fund an account. All right, guys, so with that, I'll be turning things over to Tyler in just one second as you guys have questions. Just type them into the questions box. We'll do our best to get everyone's questions answered. Uh, Tyler has mentioned that he'll be taking questions as we go along, so uh, we'll try to get them answered uh, as we go. Also, if uh, you want to review the recording, I'll post the recording of this webinar on BMT sometime tomorrow. I will also send it to NinjaTrader and to FXCM, so if you guys want to ask them for the recording, they'll be able to help you out. All right, guys, here comes Tyler from FXCM. Well, good afternoon, traders the world over. My name is Tyler Yell. I am with the Daily FX team here at FXCM, and it is a pleasure to be speaking with you about the advantages of trading spot FX with NinjaTrader. Uh, as Mike mentioned, I do want to take questions in real time. I feel that that provides the most dynamic conversation and of course you are the most important party here. I understand in reading the forum on Big Mike Trading that we have traders around the world who are attending and naturally uh, there are questions that are pertinent to specific sections of the world. So all that to say, I want you to get the most out of this session. Uh, I encourage live questions and if I don't answer your question then and there uh, rest assured I will uh, again it's just we want to make sure the flow of today's conversation is as smooth as possible so I do want to start with the title and the risk disclaimer as I'm sure you all are accustomed to if you have viewed many webinars before we are going to be discussing the advantages of trading spot FX uh, I'm going to cover that in detail and we are going to talk about why traders find that so helpful to come to the spot FX market. And again, I understand questions will flood during this presentation and that's perfectly fine. So of course, the risk disclaimer, there is more leverage, i.e. less margin required in trading this market. Uh, but with all markets that allow for leverage and even some that don't, must state that Past performance is no guarantee of future results and that especially when trading on margin does carry a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all traders and investors. Of course, the high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Okay, so with that housekeeping out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you have my contact details. Of course, that's very important to me. You see my email right there, and I'm going to type in as well during today's presentation if you guys are okay with that, because we have the forum, but then I also want you to have somebody here at FXCM that you can reach to should you have any questions or if you have follow-up questions regarding today's presentation. That, of course, as well is very important to me. So uh, you see my email address up there, and then I just typed in my email address in the comment and chat section below. Okay, now let's talk about today's agenda. We are, of course, going to be covering the topic of the title slide, which is advantages of trading this market. Specifically, I do want to compare it to currency futures, which many of you are comfortable and familiar with. I want to talk about the differences in costs and the flexibility that has brought historically traders to the spot FX market. Also, as Mike mentioned before we got underway, 
Ninja does have a great offer, and then FXCM has some elite pricing options as well. So on top of just the, the generic moving from futures to spot FX reduction in cost, FXCM, and we're going to talk about the, the market microstructure in a moment, but has the ability to lower the cost for you even further. Naturally, we're in the interest of making it as attractive as possible for traders to come to this market. Uh, one bit of background about me uh, is that I came to FXCM from JP Morgan over five years ago uh, because I saw the growth in this market that was developing. And, and so all that to say, I'm familiar with different market microstructures, and I do feel that the spot FX market for the informed trader and investor, the spot FX market offers a lot of wonderful wonderful flexibilities that really is not found elsewhere. And then lastly, we are going to close it up with some Q&A. Uh, definitely feel free to ask any questions you have. I know many of you uh, probably have dabbled or have heard about spot FX trading in the past. Maybe you blew it off due to some misconceptions from years ago. Uh, maybe you just didn't know what questions to ask, and, and now you have those questions and somebody who's welcoming them and happy to field them. Obviously, we also have the pleasure of Ray with us from Ninja Trader, and he will be more than happy to field any questions as well if you want to hear about how this partnership is working with FXCM and Ninja Trader. Okay, so we're going to be talking a lot about spot FX, of course. Uh, I want to start with just kind of the overview, and naturally, for you currency futures traders, there are a lot of flexibility, a lot of common aspects, a lot of lap overs, if you will. Uh, but what I want to talk about is some of the distinctions. Because spot FX is in its entirety for individual or retail traders a newer market. Uh, now, just going down the lines, this is a 24-5 market. Now, the picture there is just to just simply provide you the image with how flexible trading in this market is and can be. The 24-5 market is a true 24-5 because the exchange naturally does not have to sh shut down for an hour because, of course, there is no exchange. We're looking at an interbank liquidity market, also known as over-the-counter. So with that, it is a straight-through auto rollover market. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but that's why I mean by a trader's market, full 24-5. Uh, market has been open since 1999, at which FXCM started in 1999, uh, and uh, the market, as you know, many of you know, but I wanted to state this for maybe some traders who were new to currency trading as a whole, whether it be futures or spot, also known as cash trading, cash forex trading. So the Wellington, New Zealand to NYC is simply stating that the market opens Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 9 a.m. in Wellington, New Zealand. And with the spot effects market, it really does follow the sun. It does not close an hour a day from 1600 to 1700. And the reason why I actually wanted to state that, and the reason why I feel that's so important, is because, of course, this is a global market. With that, that 1600 to 1700 may not be an important time for news in the U.S., but yesterday, as an example, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand came out and had their very high impact rate decision at 1700 when they were a little more dovish than people expected. The New Zealand dollar against the U.S. dollar dropped about 100 pips right as the futures market was opening up again for the day. So it's one of those aspects where, you know, that just happened yesterday. Of course, there's plenty of other examples, but there's news happening 24 hours a day. And with that, section of the world, you have Australia, you have obviously China, you have New Zealand, you have Japan, these major economies, well, New Zealand's not a major economy, but you have these major economies that are coming out with news announcements around the clock. So even having that one hour where you're offline can really dampen whether it's your algorithm trading or it's your manual trading. I know yesterday when that New Zealand dollar dropped 100 pips. That's something that I want to have access to, especially if I'm in that trade or a certain level has been breached that causes me to enter a trade. Now, the flexibility has a lot to do with that. The other thing is that because we're not going through an exchange, we are going through, like I said earlier, over-the-counter 
market. We're looking at liquidity providers that FXCM has teamed up with. And we're going to go with this in just a moment, but that allows us more flexibility than dealing with the exchange. Less fees, we're going to talk about the cost structure, uh, but one of the main attraction points for this market is the fact that once you've paid the spread, you're done. And that's a, that's a, very, that's a very attractive part for somebody who's used to playing their brokerage commissions, which I understand those can be negotiated, but paying the brokerage commissions, playing the clearing fee, the exchange fee, all of those start to add up and obviously take a hit or start to dampen the returns that you're looking to gain on your trading. And then auto rollover. Uh, naturally, I know a lot of futures traders and they've told me uh, that uh, you know, one of the things that have caused them to come to the spot market is the auto rollover. There's no need to worry about a rollover strategy because it is auto rollover. You don't have to worry about the wide spreads that happen when you're trying to manually roll over because again, for positions traders, this is one of the best markets for, or well, spot is one of the best ways to trade the underlying foreign exchange market because of that auto rollover. You don't have to worry about that and also the rollovers are auto credited to the account. So it's a very helpful point, makes it, again, just it makes it more simple, and that's all has to do with the flexibility that's within this market. So with that, I understand that we have a lot of traders who use NinjaTrader. They have algorithms on there, and so I actually want to kick off with a little bit of an advanced subject, which now that we've covered just kind of the, the, the bird's eye view, if you will, the 10,000-foot view of the spot FX market, being true 24-5, not closing from Sunday 5 p.m. to Friday 5 p.m., less fees, auto rollovers. I want to actually jump right into algo trading. I'll bring me to my next slide. Okay, and I see we are getting a few questions. So uh, one thing I do want to mention, and uh, we use at FXC, and we have a, a bit of a different, bit of a different software. So I just want to make sure that I am seeing all the questions as they're coming in. Yeah, I, I thought I would let you get one more slide in before we dive into some of these. <laughs> okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, let, let, we'll go through this slide, and then we'll then we'll dig through those questions. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, when I say DMA, naturally talking about direct market access, and, and, and that 24-hour aspect is so key for strategy efficiency, especially if you are trading Asian currencies, which one thing that we've looked at at FXCM is success of strategies around the clock. Naturally, we have found that a lot of our traders, from just a pure profitability standpoint, really do very well in those range-bound Asian trading sessions. With that, we have a lot of, we come across a lot of systems that trade those very effectively. And so if you have an algo trading system that's trading around the clock, and if you're looking for some of those times of day where there's very well-defined support and resistance, we're not seeing the breakouts that we see in the London session, uh, it's, it's important to have full access of those markets at that time of day. So that's why that, two, that true 24-hour trading is so important for your algo efficiency and then naturally with ninja trader it's going to flow very nicely when using the liquidity of the spot FX market through FXCM due to the microstructure and, and what I mean by that again we're going to get into more detail on this and I appreciate the questions that are coming in I look forward to answering those but is the way we have set up is that we do have multiple liquidity providers that are filling the trades of course this is not going through an exchange so this allows these banks these hedge funds, basically these very large liquidity providers to provide the liquidity around the clock as long as your system has the criteria met to enter the trade or exit the trade or manage the trade however you see fit, which naturally you're probably coding through NinjaTrader, then those can be executed through our liquidity providers, absent okay. of the exchange. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's define better what DMA is and if it's possible to uh, be trading with the Forex broker that is not DMA and what it means to the end user. Absolutely. So when we talk about DMA, we're talking about direct market access. So very good question. And 
to, to elaborate on that, and I feel like this is when I've spoken to traders from other markets before, understandably, this is their hesitation, is the, really the misunderstanding, I, I would like to say, of DMA or what the other alternatives are. So when I say DMA, I'm talking about direct market access, access directly to the liquidity in the market. Naturally, when you have as, we'll say, as few of layers as possible to the direct liquidity source, it allows your system, from my experience, to act as efficiently as possible and also as effectively. Uh, so when we're talking about DMA, we're talking about the ability to tap into the available liquidity in the market with as few layers as possible. So when I have the title up here, DMA versus Sponsored Access to Market Liquidity, naturally when you're trading on either some type of spot forex brokers, which I do want to discuss in a second, or futures brokers, naturally you're accessing the exchange in a sponsored manner through them. Uh, and that's, that's naturally where some of those fees come through. The important points that I wanted to talk to, as you see here, is with market makers in this market, which is a method that really, I think, has given Spot Forex a bad name. And since 2007, FXCM has championed essentially an ECN type of execution, also known as a non dealing desk. And the whole purpose of that is that you do not have the broker trading against you because DMA, and to me the effectiveness of a DMA type strategy, again direct market access, is that you're getting the best bid, the best offer in the market. You're not trading against your broker and that's where we see market makers. Naturally, the implication of trading with a market maker is that if you win, they lose. If they lose, you win. And understandably, that's why some people have been happy to stay at the exchanges, trading futures, even at the expense of those extra fees. So what FXCM has done, really again since 2007, has championed this option of, I say ECN, it can also be called a no dealing desk, and that's how we commonly refer it to, because then you're trading with a broker who's giving you access to the market without an ounce of conflict of interest and the next slide we'll we'll explain that more okay uh, do you want to get into that or do you want to take some of these questions I would like to take some questions if that's okay, okay with you sure uh, Kenneth is saying is asking he says he has a FXCM account in London uh, with MetaTrader Ford he uses it for FX only he trades oil futures with Ninja Trader and another broker uh, IB and he says he loves Ninja and he would like to trade Forex with FXCM, uh, but can he use his existing MetaTrader 4 account? So I guess the question is, does he need a new account or, or how does that work? For, for the login, and especially if we're going to be paying the licensing fee, which of course Ray will get into in just a moment, my understanding is that we are going to need a new login specific to that uh, because because the way that those accounts are set up and that we are crediting the brokerage fee. I'm glad to hear that Ken is trading with us and is and is happy with everything there. Uh, but my, my understanding is that uh, with your love of Ninja and wanting to trade Forex via FXCM that you would not be able to connect to the MT4 account that we would need to create a new account number for you, Kenneth. Okay. Uh, Bob's saying that he has an account with FXCM and he also uses NinjaTrader. He says every night prior to midnight Eastern, FXCM drops the connection. Is this an FXCM maintenance window? Uh, it says, he says it seems you know, a little bit strange because it's supposed to be 24-hour market. So any comment on what's happening there? No, very good question, Bob, and I appreciate you, you mentioning that. Um, there is no... Not that at least that I'm aware of, because I trade around the clock as well. I like to use opening range strategies around the different markets, and that is something that that I'm not experiencing okay. naturally. And just to let everybody know, uh, of course, we do have a trade audit department, and you know, as as a fully regulated company, we have nothing to hide. So that if you ever are negatively affected by a situation like that, Bob, I would highly encourage you as a client of FXCM to reach out to us, because if you were negatively affected, we definitely want to make amends. And I, I wonder if uh, Raymond from Ninja Trader is there. Have you heard anything like that about uh, dropping connections every night? Uh, 
Oh, hey guys, yep, I'm here. This is Ray with uh, Ninja Trader. You know, uh, no, I haven't heard that. When we create our Ninja Trader uh, connection, though, there are a couple items there uh, that we'll take a look at that pop up uh, that just have to do with the technology um, and the API. So we'll take a look at that when uh, when I show you how to create your connection, and okay. I'll, I'll look at that right now as well. Okay, thanks. thanks. And Mike, I don't feel like I, I answered the specific question, but uh, FXCM does not have a maintenance period that breaks connection. So I okay. want to make sure that I answer that question directly. Right. So the, the bottom line is it, it's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Uh, Franz is asking, I, I'm not sure I understand this question. Maybe you will. He says, what is the FXCM hedging thing with NinjaTrader? Do you know what he's talking about? I do not, um, <laughs> okay. because we're not hedging with with Ninja Traders. Yeah. So I don't know uh, either. Okay, so he'll, please clarify, friends. Uh, Squeeze Trader is asking. He says, uh, if the FXM or if the forex market never closes, then when does a chart with daily bars start and close? Ah, uh, great question. So our daily bars are from 5 p.m. Eastern Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That's when the market opens on Sunday, and Sunday's open actually counts as a Monday bar because it's each daily candle is a 24-hour candle. So naturally, there's going to be five daily candles for the trading week, 5 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. Squeeze also asking, if I enter a limit order with a stop and target, if the limit order fills and then he loses a connection, what happens? Now this is, I'm not sure if it's the same on spot, but on in the futures world, this is commonly referred to as a server-side OCO order. So basically, like stops and targets are transmitted along with the entry order. And f for some futures brokers, not all, those uh, OCO uh, order cancels, or one cancels other, can reside on the server so that if the client you know, the, the, the home computer were to get disconnected, crash, reboot, lose power, whatever, those orders still exist somewhere. Um, how would that happen with, uh, with FXCM? How would that work? Exact same, Mike, in the sense that they are stored on our servers. So those, those are essentially pending orders on our servers waiting to go into execution, okay. in which what you're seeing on your platform is really kind of like an API that's just showing you what's on our servers. Okay, good to know. Uh, Saruba is asking, so will charts of DMA and market maker be different? I guess he's asking if the price will be different or if their movement will be different? Right. Now, it's a very good question, uh, if whether or not the charts of a you know, direct market access or no dealing desk broker in a market maker will be different. Uh, they, I mean, from broker to broker, I would say definitely yes. And, and the reason why is because if you're looking at a dealing desk broker, naturally, they're just like you and that they're trying to manage their risk. It doesn't mean that they're evil, it just, and, and, and I don't want that message to come across because I don't, don't believe they are. They're, they're offering a service, it's just I feel that the no dealing desk or direct market access is a better service. Um, and, and for full, full disclosure, FXCM has, for the more, I would say, price sensitive clients, uh, has a, a uh, what we call a market maker or direct dealer option. Uh, but the the difference that you would see there um, often is minimal. You'll have some brokers that are just a market maker, and naturally they they control the price feed. It's not going to be too far varying from the interbank rates or the direct market access rates that you know you're seeing on our platform. But all that to say, again, not saying that they're evil, and that's not that's not the message I'm trying to communicate. But if they have a bunch of risk and you know showing the price at you know showing Euro dollar at 130.50 uh, would clear off a bunch of orders and a bunch of risk, whereas maybe the interbank market only hit 130.45, uh, then that's something they could do fully within the trade agreement. And again, it's not evil. Uh, it's it's part of the trade agreement, but there can be a difference with what you'd see from one broker offering direct market access and another broker offering market maker execution. Okay. Let's take one more question, then we'll hold these other questions until we get a few more slides in. Uh, Catalin is asking, is it possible to trade oil and gold with FXEM using NinjaTrader? If you are trading from outside of the United States, that is available to execute through 
FXCM with oil and gold. Now, it is quoted from us as U.S. oil or U.K. oil for Brent, and then XAU USD if you're trading gold. However, U.S. traders, including yours truly, does not have the ability due to U.S. regulations to trade what we call CFDs or contract for differences like oil and gold with FXCM U.S. Right. Well, about half of the people on BMT are, are outside of the U.S. Um, just so we can elaborate real quick, do you offer sure. anything else other than uh, uh, oil and gold? I, I'm assuming you have like the, the indices as well? Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we do have the indices. Naturally, uh, the Nikkei has been extremely popular, uh, but uh, the European indices, uh, we do offer some more precious metals like silver and palladium and copper. Uh, we have just a U.S. dollar index, which is, which is very popular, uh, but I would say without a doubt, oil, metals, and then some of the major indices are our most popular. CFDs okay. and, and definitely I would say for those traders outside of the US that's right. definitely worth looking at. Okay, great. So uh, let's pause on the questions for the moment and get back to the PowerPoint. Okay, that sounds great. And I do appreciate the question, so do keep them coming. Okay, so this is to give you a little bit more depth into our no dealing desk offering. Again, it's something we championed since 2007 and we're happy to do so uh, because when Really, the proverbial hit the fan in 2008 in the credit crisis. We had a lot of dealing desks that were going out of business or laying off staff, and um, it was one of FXCM's best years. And I don't say that to gloat at all, but the reason why is because as a no dealing desk offering our clients a DMA or direct market access, we had no risk in the transaction. Essentially, the way this often works is that we are taking you know, 13 plus liquidity providers. We have a best bid, best offer execution engine, and what's happening is that naturally we're showing the best bid, we're showing the best offer, and then we have a small markup in the spread, and that's 100% of our revenue. And this is a point that I'll hit on through today's presentation, uh, but that's why we have very competitive market-driven prices without broker risk, because we are not taking positions in that manner, like some of the other spot FX dealing desks were offering. Uh, the fair and transparent order execution goes to that as well in the sense that because we are only paid via the spread, we are as interested as possible in keeping you confident in our execution and that you understand how the execution model works. And I have a, the next slide is going to just have a just kind of a nice imagery of how the no dealing desk execution works. The anonymous order execution is very important to anybody who has been restricted by brokers. That's another uh, kind of red flag from dealing desks or market makers. Market makers is if you have a strategy, maybe it's been doing very well, and you start to get requotes, or you start to get order rejects. Uh, what happens with our execution is that your orders, whether they be entry orders or market orders, go to the liquidity provider in the name of FXCM. So whether it's bank A, B, C, or D, and, and, and we list the liquidity providers on our on our investor relations page. They're the largest banks in the world um, and, and some of the very large hedge funds that, that do provide liquidity. But naturally, they don't have the ability to say, you know, I don't want to take Mike's order because he's just been trading too great. And if we take the other side of his order, it's bad for us. Or I don't want to, you know, shadow his order and, and give him a worse fill than we're getting and all of that. Essentially, what's happening is they're just receiving a stream of market orders is how it comes into them. Because once the price is triggered on the servers, it goes to the liquidity provider as a market order from FXCM, both buy and sell. So there's really no ability for them to come in and start to intervene with the execution. So that's why anonymous order execution is very important, especially with algo traders and some scalpers as well. Now, other traders find it valuable as well, but those are the ones who have been most needful of anonymous order execution. And naturally, uh, something I touched on before, no conflict of interest between broker and trader is very important kind of echoing that same thing. Uh, if you've ever had a requote uh, or dealer intervention, which is you know, where they essentially say uh, that this order is no longer good, we're no longer going to take this order, or you cannot trade this audit system, this algo during these hours, um, you, you get very frustrated when something like that happens because you have done the work, you have done the labor of finding a strategy that works and analyzing a market or a certain currency pair, and then when you try and get into that trade and you're 
really blocked by your broker, there, there are a few things as frustrating. Uh, so that is that is one way why, or one way that the no dealing desk offering has been such a valuable and valuable offering to traders of all strategies across the world. Um, and, and then that also, again, all of this really kind of funnels down to the same thing of, you know, you can be flexible in the strategy that you use. You do not have to be worried. Really, because we're paid on volume, as you can imagine, we encourage all strategies. The more active, the better. Because we're not taking the risk on these trades, we're happy for you to have a strategy that works for you. So that's why there is no restriction on the strategy you use, whether you're trading the news or scalping, any EA, that's an expert advisor or an algo, uh, is fine by us. And this is the cute imagery to really show you how the straight through processing works and that if, uh, you know, if Mike is trading from home, essentially what he's seeing is the bank's liquidity. Right now, Bank B is offering the best buy and sell. So that's what, that's what is essentially being fed through to the Ninja platform. FXCM does have a markup. Again, full disclaimer, this is negotiable. We do, and this is something I'll, I'll touch on throughout the presentation, we do offer elite pricing for what we consider active traders or high balance traders. Uh, but that's just for the imagery there that we have a markup and that's 100% of our revenue. Okay, so this is where we get into the transaction costs. Uh, naturally, we looked at the no dealing desk, also known as a DMA offering. So with spot FX, again, the spread is 100% of the revenue that FXCM receives. The commission free trading aspect is, is in the sense that Again, backing that up, that we are deriving our revenue from the spread. And specifically, I'm just going to go back to that last slide, the increase in the spread. Again, negotiable depending on trading volume. The PIP value and trade size. Now, naturally, you have futures contracts of different size and availability. Uh, we have lots that are available to be traded in this market. Uh, because of that, you're able to manage your costs very effectively able to manage your risk very effectively around the clock. Uh, and that's very important to a lot of traders as well, is to have that massive amount of liquidity and those varying lot sizes down to a 1K, also known as a micro lot. But to have that much flexibility to manage your risk also helps manage your price as well so that you get the liquidity, but that at the same time you're going to manage your trade size that works best to optimize really your strategy. And then beyond the fact that we're spread based, I do want to state again that we do have those premium pricing options, uh, which leads me into the next slide, in which we can give you really a raw rate, which is exactly what we're seeing from our liquidity providers. There is no markup, and then you can negotiate the spread based on the volume you're, or, I'm sorry, negotiate the commission. So then it's a raw spread plus commission. We have a department called the Active Trader Department that is meant just for that. And as you can imagine, we plug in the price feed. Uh, so when you plug into Ninja Trader, the price feed is plugged in there, and then you're fully set. And then the last thing on, on the trading cost, just to break down, I'm familiar with the different fees in futures trading, so this is just a, a really a quick breakdown, just a, just a lasting table to kind of stick in your mind about how the spread really is the only cost. One thing I didn't put in there, but I touched on earlier, was the fact that you don't have to have a, a separate strategy if you're a position trader for rollovers. And this, so beyond, beyond the spread, really stomps with the FX market, of course, with futures. You often are paying either charting or data fees, uh, clearing fee, exchange fee, brokerage commissions, which leaves us with, in our opinion, as you can imagine, that the spot FX, we're trading the cash market, from a cost point of view, is to the advantage of the trader because of that flexibility. All right, Tyler, if, if it's all right with you, let's take a few more questions here. Uh, of course, of course. Okay, Wayne, let's see. Wayne says that uh, he has, he's using FXCM and NinjaTrader. And he says that it takes forever to load tick data, historical data. So there's been some recent uh, discussion back and forth. Do you know anything about this? Or maybe uh, Raymond from NinjaTrader can comment on this? 
I had, I'll, I'd like to, if you don't mind, just take a stab at it first, and I'm definitely welcome Ray, Ray to come in. Uh, I, you know, I've been reading the, the Ask Mike Anything forum, and then I saw that that was a, a question there as well, and I know that that file is so large that I think there had been some, some issues with the, the transfer of data. I don't believe at all that it's on Ninja's side. I believe it's that it's an R loading it onto the platform. Uh, and, and something that, from my understanding, that the programming team at FXDM is, is definitely working to okay. to bring to resolution okay. for the traders. All right. So uh, is, there, is there any particular way that we can kind of keep on, keep abreast of that or see, you know, if there's any kind of ETAs or, uh, you know, is there... I don't know if there's any kind of like knowledge base on FXCM's side, or should we just ask you, or or keep maybe asking Brad in the AMA thread? Yeah, Mike, that was going to be my initial recommendation: is that the AMA thread that that you check with Brad, uh, just because he has such a really such a tight communication with the programming department that he's he's more abreast on that than anybody. Okay, and just to clarify clarify for everybody on BMT, there's a thread. Uh, called Ask Me Anything. There's several of them for all kinds of different uh, people in the industry, and there's one for FXCM, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, uh, let's see. Jason's asking, does FXCM use the New York close or GMT for daily close? I think you said it was New York, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, we use the New York close at 5 p.m. Okay. And Gary asking, okay, he says he gets an error when connecting to from Ninja to FXCM, logon failed, the connection cannot be established since your account supports hedging. You must contact your broker to have hedging disabled before you can, before you can connect. Any ideas? That, that might be a Ray question. <laughs> okay. Raymond, are you there? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. I, I did hear that question. I'm not familiar with that error, but, um, you know, it, if uh, if he wants to send just send that uh, note into support at indotrader dot com and uh, we'll definitely get him an answer on that. Okay, thanks. Richard asking if he runs two trading, if he runs two, I guess he's asking two copies of Ninja Trader side by side, with one as a demo account, the other as a live account. Would the live chart show up with different data? Okay, I guess maybe what he's really asking is the demo data feed. Is it the same exact? data feed that's provided to live accounts, funded accounts? Yes, Richard, it's the exact same feed. Okay. And maybe we should, I have a, just a real quick follow-up. So in the futures world, you know, the, the CME, as far as they're concerned, there's no such thing as demo. <laughs> there's no such thing as free <laughs> data. Uh, you know, obviously there are some brokers that kind of, you know, provide a demo, but uh, Technically speaking, if you ask the CME, that doesn't exist. But with Spot, with Forex, it's different, right? So how does that work if somebody wants to get demo? Is there like a time limit or, or how can they trial it? We offer it at no cost. Uh, we have it set up that you can go to FXCM and you can get the login details and that's what you can plug into uh, the NT platform, the NinjaTrader platform. So it's one of those, I think, one of those just very fundamental differences of the two markets uh, that because we're streaming in a price feed from our liquidity providers we do not have a time limit on it and we do not have a cost to right. demo the price feed okay. in the execution. Great. Uh, Mike asking, having DMA do you have fixed spreads or do the spreads widen with volatility? Very good question Mike. Yeah, Our spreads definitely vary. Uh, Any time there's a fixed anything and as far as pricing in a market, it usually means that you're trading against somebody who's controlling the market uh, and, and probably has the upper hand. Uh, so I, I say that in the sense that it does definitely widen with volatility uh, because when we're streaming those prices in from those liquidity providers, I mean, it's, it's varying on a tick-by-tick -tick basis because our price engine is matching the best bid, best offer. So definitely widens with volatility. Because of the number of liquidity providers we have, though, we still keep a very tight spread even with that, even during major news announcements. So it's not it's not FXCM doing it. It's just you're quoting the best bid and offer, and the, the banks are the ones that are widening it. 100% 100 correct, yes. Okay. And let's see. DW asking how much historical data is available. And maybe we should break that down into... Uh, like tick, minute, daily, 
you know, because I know that's how it works on the future side. There's very little sure. tick. There's quite a bit more minute, and there's a whole bunch of daily. Is it similar with Forex? It is. It is. Uh, and this is one of the questions that was on the AMA forum, but it's about three to four years of tick data. These are, of course, huge files. So if this is something you get, um, start loading it and then go take a walk or grab a cup of coffee. For a minute, it's about it's around 10 years, and then I want to say, and, and this one I'm not, I'm not fully familiar with, but I want to say uh, daily goes back to, I want to say the mid-90s, but again, I'm not fully sure on daily. I, just, I know the tick is about four years, and then it's yeah. about 10 years. Thomas is asking if we can use the MinuteTrader DOM, and uh, I know that that answer is yes, but he's also asking, can we see, I, can, I think it's what, he, what he's recalling or referring to as the, the depth, the level two depth. Is there a similar depth visible on a spot forex market? There is. You know, I'm I'm honestly not sure regarding uh, Thomas's question. If and, and Ray may be able to answer this, if we are feeding the liquidity tiers in there, I know for a while we actually offered a specific liquidity depth or level two platform so that you could see. And really, that was to help prevent traders from not getting their orders chopped up because if there's of course, 20 million at the top tier of liquidity, but there's 30 million in orders going through. Well, then 10 million of that's going to be chopped down to the next tier of liquidity. I don't know. I do not know if the feed that we're sending okay. through the DOM has that liquidity tier. Okay. Ray may know better than I do. Ray, any comment? Yeah, hey guys, I'm actually um, testing that out. <laughs> I'm bringing that up right now. I've got a you know a demo account over here, so I know some connections. It depends on whether you have you know your live um, account or the demo account. So um, I'll go ahead and bring that up when we bring up the software as well. Great. Okay, great. And uh, I'm, I see a follow-up question from Jeff asking to clarify if the if the historical data is free, and that's that's correct, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's take just a few more here and then we'll get back to the presentation. Sure. Juan is asking, in the UK, will you have an equivalent spread bet type account? Yes, we do offer spread bet options, absolutely. Okay. Michael asking, do you provide data feed to access historical currency prices? I think that's what we just talked about on the historical data, right? Correct. David asking, if daily bars are from 5 p.m. to 5 p.m., does the default Forex template, that's an integrator thing, uh, use these parameters, or do we need to create a specific template to match the correct 24 hours? So that's that's probably a Ninja Trader question. And Ray uh, Ray's going to be demoing the Ninja Trader side at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of Tyler's PowerPoint. So we'll try to get back to that. Franz, okay, Franz clarifying his earlier question when he tried to use his FXCM account in Ninja Trader. It said FXCM has to turn off hedging, so that sounds like a similar thing as to what Gary said. So Franz, uh, let's see, Raymond said to email support at ninjatrader.com with that error message, and they'll check into it. And I also know that's a server setting on our side, um, so all that to say, uh, we are more than happy if, if NinjaTrader says that that's a server setting with FXCM, then that should be something we could very easily you know, flip okay. on or flip off to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay. Two more questions, then we'll move on. E Mini is asking: Are there any overnight margin maintenance fees? Uh, very good question. There are not. Uh, so the the initial margin that you pay to get into a trade, which for uh, we cover this in, in a little bit, but the the margins for U.S. spot accounts is going to be two percent of the contract value. So for a hundred thousand euro USD, it's going to be about three thousand in margin, U.S. dollar based margin. Uh, that is the full margin. So the margin doesn't vary. There is no negotiation of margin like there can be with intraday margin requirements and then you know, overnight set by the exchange. So all that to say it's a fixed amount of margin. There are no extra fees. The only thing outside of uh, the, the spread, outside of the uh, margin, even though margin is not a cost, but then of course, like I mentioned earlier, rollovers are applied when you hold the trade past 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so that can be a credit depending on the side of the trade you're on, or a debit from the trade, uh, that would show up automatically. Uh, will you be covering rollover in more detail later? I will, so, yes. Okay. So I had a question about that too, and I'll, I'll sure. wait till then. All right, last question for now. Squeeze is asking, he says he tried FXCM last year. He likes to trade micros to diversify over many pairs and likes to be able to scale out of positions. 
However, he found it nearly impossible to get answers from customer service, and he was told it was because he was trading micro. So before you answer, I want to mention one quick thing. Uh, again, the point of this new Ask Me Anything series on BMT is to get you guys in touch with uh, people in the industry, people that are in a position to be able to help you. That said, those threads are not for providing tech support, but you know, if you ever reached a roadblock of some sort, I'm sure you could use that thread to get it escalated. But Tyler, do you have any idea why he would be told that because he's trading micros, he mm -hmm. is having a harder time? Yes, I do. And I can state and start off with the fact that's no longer the case. So when, when Micro was introduced in about 2008, it was, it was introduced as a discount brokerage. With that, most of the support would have been by the forums. Well, as of late last year, we essentially did away with that, and we all clumped it up into what we called a basic account. But it still had full support. So I, I am sorry for that. It's one of those things we tried to launch a discount brokerage. It didn't go over well for a service point of view, and so we did away with it. Okay. Okay, so there's still probably 15 questions. Let's go ahead and pause for those uh, and get back to the PowerPoint for now, and then we'll pick up on the questions in a few slides. Sounds great, Mike. Thank you. Okay, so covering the breakdown of trading costs leads us into really one of the things that issues one of those responses such as really when you talk to a futures trader coming over to spot FX specifically with FXCM because most brokers do not offer this and we hope that it's something that you do not have to use but it's nice to have as a safety net uh, what that is is guaranteed limited risk and what I mean by that is that we do have a margin watcher on the platform but something we have done is we've gone ahead and set up a guarantee that you can never lose more than your trading capital. Now, I know this is a lot of words for a PowerPoint slide and I apologize for that, but it's important information. So that's why I felt it was necessary to have a little bit more details. Uh, but all that to say, should your usable margin, which naturally is your equity minus margin tied up in open trades, drop to zero, we do provide a margin call feature in which your account normally is still above zero. However, what we do is we do that right away at the market price so as to minimize the negative effect of the trade that has gone sour. The reason why I introduced this is, the, is so that you would understand that with our margin watching feature, if the equity ever falls below the equity requirements, which is what happens when you have zero in usable margin, we do have a margin call. We trigger liquidation of all positions. If you are trading at such a large position, remember SpotFX does allow for more leverage than futures, and the account should ever go below zero because, as Mike mentioned, almost 50% of the listeners here are outside of the U.S., and you have access not to 2% margin but to half a percent margin. That's up to 200 times leverage. I'm not recommending you use that, but should the account go below zero, you simply call up FXCM with your account number and we will bring you up to zero. We will bring you back to zero so that you will never owe your broker money. So all that to say, it's something that is divergent in what you're probably familiar with in futures trading and something I definitely wanted to mention. And just real quick, do you is sure. there is there one account um, like a master account, and then we can have sub accounts each with their own account numbers. Where this feature would apply, or is that not possible? When when you say where this feature would apply, how how would you like? Let's it? say I want to put ten thousand dollars into my master account, but I want sure. to divvy it up, uh, you know, with five different two thousand dollar sub accounts. Uh, is that possible, or do I need to actually, you know, fill out the paperwork and open all those separate accounts? It's, it's very possible. It, it would take one application, and then we actually have a online account portal. It's called myfxcm.com, but you could also call us up, and it's a very simple process. Once you fill out one application, if you want sub-accounts, uh, that's, that's very easy to set up. Something to put it in more real-world uh, understanding uh, terms. I, I have multiple futures accounts and you know I day trade with one of them and I swing trade with others and it's just easier for me <laughs> that way because it gets too confusing right. to try to do it out of one account. So I would need to, if I wanted to do it with FXCM, I, I, would, I would need to do what? Once you fill out the initial application, you would just call and let us know how many sub-accounts you want. 
Okay. Um, don't be don't be alarmed if we ask you. You know, for for what reason are you wanting these? And you could you could say exactly what Mike just said. You know, I have different okay. strategies for different accounts, and I want to compartmentalize because that's easier for me, and that's perfectly fine. And we'll get those set up for you. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay, so moving from the guaranteed limited risk, and again, that's just to um, you know, support the fact that you cannot lose more than your trading capital. Again, it's something we hope doesn't take place, but it is a nice backstop for traders. Moving on, we're going to talk about trade size and risk flexibility. Uh, so here we're talking about some of the contracts that are available. Um, and of course, some of the biggest aspects of this is the fact of volume and liquidity that's available at all types of trade sizes within spot FX. Now, I know some of the algo traders do like to break up their trading into what's called child orders. Um, you know, as, as part of a subset of a big block of orders that's when they go through through their trading. Uh, and if you want to do that, again, the flexibility of micro lots, uh, which was you know, mentioned earlier by Squeeze Trader, uh, the micro lot flexibility is extremely helpful because it can allow you to minimize your risk. And from a trading standpoint, obviously, risk flexibility is about as important of a thing as there is when developing your strategy. Uh, so all that to say, the trade size and risk flexibility is important because I understand that um, Many future contracts have come, and even micro future contracts have come, uh, but the margin still is not as flexible as it is in spot FX. Um, of course, with spot FX, we trade down to, as Squeeze Trader was saying, down to the micro lot, so down to 10 cents a pip. So really, you know, today on the pound, we, which is pound USD, we had a move close to 200 pips. And with that, I mean, that move could be worth as little as $20. And I know nobody in this room is interested in that, in that little of a move for a 200 pip or a, or a two cent move. But all that say, uh, it is nice to be able to control your risk down to 10 cents per pip with spot FX with the same amount of margin with auto rollovers. Uh, and what's I think nice is the fact that you do have the same volume benefits as larger orders, meaning that if you are on our elite pricing or depending on your strategy and different times of day, you're sending in different sized orders. Again, kind of going back to that, the, the child orders for some of the algorithms, you still have the same benefits in spread um, in percent margin required. So I think the trade size and risk flexibility is extremely important and very helpful. I, I think so it's just very important. Just to back up or to echo. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I think it's also very important. And one of the reasons that I think it's important is because uh, I see a lot of people trading SIM, and they're kind of trading SIM forever. Uh, and I think that even that $20 a day, which is on a, on a pretty big move, an average day is probably much less than that, is, is actually a, a really great way to get your feet wet and to start getting some of the emotions and things involved in trading so that you can you know, stop paper trading forever and actually put a little bit of money, even just a tiny bit, on the line it will really help you, uh, you know, get to where you need to be. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate you saying that. I would completely agree that, you know, a lot of the people listening today are people who are wondering if they should even dip their toe in this market. And when you can limit your risk down to 10 cents a pip, that's a, that's a great way to, to have the emotions of live trading with absolute minimal risk via that very minimal trade size. Uh, so this slide I bring up here is to just kind of validate what I think Mike was saying, and then even as you go on, making sure that you have trade size that's flexible and really risk appropriate for your trading. Now, just to give you a little background, we have hundreds of thousands of live accounts here, and naturally we study those for uh, profitability settings. We want to see really what separates our successful traders from unsuccessful traders. Uh, and what we noticed is that there really was a sweet spot in what we call effective leverage, naturally, that is total exposure divided by your account size. So I bring this up just to state how important that trade flexibility is, that trade size flexibility is. And what we found here is that the profitability, which is this blue line up here, 
this bar right here, profitability highly increased when clients flexibly tuned down their leverage. Our least profitable clients, about 20% of the clients who were profitable, were using very large amounts of leverage. So 20% profitable, they were using about 26 times leverage. Going to the next bar, 33% profitable using six times leverage, 37.37% profitable were using about five times effective leverage. So if you had 10,000 in the account, that would be limiting your trade size to a total exposure of roughly 50K. Uh, and, and I share that with you to say that re really regardless of the available capital you have, because I've found that the trader's available capital for trading is about as individual as each of our thumbprints. And because of that, it's very important to have that ability to tune down with as much flexibility, your trade size as appropriate. So right. I just share this profitability ratio by equity size for that purpose. Is there, can you put it in terms of like what we're just talking about, you know, 10 cents a pip, what, what leverage would that equate to? Absolutely. Well, 10 cents a pip would be on a, what we call a micro lot. It's a thousand unit trade or, you know, one, one contract that's easier for you to, to, to grasp onto. But what we'd be looking at with a 1,000 unit trade or a micro lot would be to have at minimum $200 in the account per micro lot, per 1,000 unit trade. Anything less than that $200 in the account, then you start to increase the leverage. And what we found naturally and through our studies is that this left bar, the clients with the most leverage were the least profitable, often because they were wary about closing out the trades because a small move against them, of course, would be a bigger move against them on their account equity. So all that to say, using that 10 cents a pip, that's a micro lot, a 10K trade, that'd be having $200 in your account to be on this right side, to be in line with our most profitable traders. If you scaled that out, a 100,000 unit trade, $10 a pip would be the equivalent of having $20,000 in the account. Again, that five to one ratio really was the sweet spot for a lot of our clients. Okay. Uh, is is uh, now a good time to go ahead and take a few more questions? They're piling up here. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah, I'd like that. All right. Uh, just so everybody knows, I'm currently reading questions from 24 minutes ago to give you guys an idea. <laughs> uh, Noah is asking, does FXCM offer a co-location with NinjaTrader? like a VPS? Yes. Short answer, yes. <laughs> Gary's asking, how does your liquidity providers make their money? Very good question. Uh, so these are, and we talked about this earlier, these are market makers. The thing that makes them different, I guess, is the fact that they are taking in this massive amounts of order flow from FXCM in the name of FXCM, both, really both bid and you know, bid and offer. Uh, so all that to say, just like we talked about earlier with a market maker, let's say you're, you're trading uh, ABC Forex, some made up broker. Uh, if they are a market maker, they are managing their risk. They're taking the other side of the trades and they're looking to make money by managing that risk. Uh, the, the difference, I think, is that with the liquidity providers, these large banks, they are making money through execution as well. They're obviously making a very, very tight margin because the raw spread that we're getting is about 0 0.5. Uh, so with that, they have very little margin on that 0 0.5 raw spread that we're getting from them. So that's probably uh, the number one way that they're making money. Other than that, though, they have multiple, obviously multiple clients outside of FXCM that they're filling trades for and managing risk against. I think the, again, the take home point, if you will, and it's a very good question, Gary, is that when they're filling orders from FXCM, they are seeing it specifically as an FXCM order. They're not seeing an order from Gary or from Mike or from Noah. Right. Okay. Noah has another question. What data feed does FXCM recommend and is there a data feed charge? So I, I think he's talking about a third party data feed, like such as Kinetic for mm -hmm. NinjaTrader, which actually is using FXCM data, but from a different server. So it's faster, at least for now. <laughs> Any comment right. on that? Well, I, you know, it's a good question, and I don't know if I have a, a specific answer other than 
the data fee. I mean, the, the charge is, is not going to be there as, as far as my understanding. Um, so, well, the, so I yeah, don't so have a full FXCM, answer on that. Yeah, the, so the way I understand it is FXCM provides historical data today. It's free, has a whole bunch of years of data, but mm -hmm. it's currently slow. They're working on resolving that. Now, there's another option with NinjaTrader called Connect um, that will let you, uh, or Kinetic, sorry, that will let you get which happens to be FXCM data, which is very important because the prices will be aligned, but it's not free, but it's faster. So I guess that's a decision that you guys would have to make. Let's see, Jason. Jason's asking, are OCO orders, we talked about before, uh, that they're server side. OCO orders are server side. You already said that. Okay, Tristam is asking, says it's had some technical problems with FXCM uh, data feed, so we've already covered that. Uh, Juan is asking if he, if he doesn't pay any fees, how much data is available? I think we covered that as well. You, you don't have any limits on like trial expiration dates or anything like that that you make available to the historical data. Correct. No, no limits there. Yeah. And if I, if I can, just to um, really just regarding uh, the question we just had regarding um, you know the data feed and things like that, you are welcome to email me um, here at FXCM. I definitely have you know kind of experts that I can bounce questions on, and uh, you know I want people to get as much value uh, for their time today as possible. So if you'd like to email me, I'd be happy to kind of go to the experts within and see if they have any recommendations as well. Okay. Catalan asking, I have a, a friend which has an account with FXCM, but he cannot trade oil and gold using NinjaTrader. He can only do it with FXCM software. Are you are you sure that we can trade oil and gold directly from NinjaTrader? I think Raymond was checking into that also. I guess that would be... Yes, uh, I'm here. Um, we do have those um, the CFDs available for... Uh, the the commodities or the the metals there, so we do have those built into NinjaTrader. So if they have a, okay, if they're qualified for the account, they should be able to do that. Okay, so and, I, I guess Catalan, if you're having some trouble, then once again email support at NinjaTrader.com and they can get you squared away. From from my understanding, it's you know it's a price fee that we're plugging in, and you know naturally, um, with our execution model, we want to get all of the markets out to trade that you're able to trade. So my understanding is that definitely something should be available. Mike asking, uh, okay, when having DMA, do you have fixed spreads or do this, okay, the spreads widen with volatility? We covered that already. Uh, the, the answer, Mike, if you watch the recording, uh, was, if I remember correctly, briefly, that yes, you know, volatility does make the spreads wider, but that's not FXCM's doing, that's the banks that they use, right? Correct. Okay, just trying to run through some of these. E-mini asking, we've already answered that. Uh, Luis asking, due to Frank Dodd laws, traders cannot hedge with long, short positions on the same product. That's just a comment. Uh, I don't know if that applies to spot forex. Any idea? It it does. It absolutely okay. does. So, yeah, as of, as of uh, October 2010, traders within the United States are not able to hedge with long and short positions on the same product. Outside of the United States, naturally, they are not affected by the right. Frank Dot Law. Jeff's asking if we can get free historical data. We've, we've covered that. The answer was yes. Uh, let's see. Mel is asking, can we use all of our NinjaTrader charting capabilities and indicators, or are we limited in any way? There's, yeah, I mean, there's no reason it would be limited, right? Unless maybe he's talking about the, the uh, it, it, is uh, FXCM providing some type of a different version of NinjaTrader? I can jump in here. This is right. No, it's the same exact version of NinjaTrader, and all charting features should work. Okay. Let's see. This maybe get another two or three to get us kind of caught up here, and then we'll get back to the slides. Uh, Sarah, ba, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, is asking, does FXCM provide services in Canada? Uh, I see they do through some other brokers, but those brokers don't support NinjaTrader. So I guess the, the ultimate question is, is it available to everybody in Canada? 
for FXC in Canada, that's, we do use Friedberg Direct, and I know that uh, things like CFDs um, have been slow to be made available. My understanding is that it's becoming available. Ray may know more than I do on that specific subject. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that the relationship we've had with Friedberg Direct, which is who we're working with for our Canadian clients, uh, has been a you know ha, has been a little slower in some of these launches. So I'm not sure if that's the same case with Ninja. Okay. Any? Uh, I'm kind of curious. I mean, there's FXCM US, there's FXCM UK. Why why go through somebody else in Canada? Could you elaborate on that, Mike? Well, I'm just wondering, I mean, you're, you're handling it directly on other parts of the world, right? So why? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, very good question. Uh, so really the, the reason for that is due to uh, the Canadian Investment Services. They, they do require that it was a kind of an internal already approved authority or gotcha. kind of FCM within Canada gotcha. uh, to, to provide that. So that's why we had to go through Friedberg Direct to offer that to our clients. Gotcha. All right, let's get one or two more. Kenneth saying he already has a lifetime license with NinjaTrader. Can he change his account with FXCM to be compatible with NinjaTrader? Uh, will he get a... Okay, he's asking if he can get the multi-broker NinjaTrader license for free. I yeah, Ray, any comments? Sure, yeah. Let me let me jump in there. It's a great question. If uh, any anyone in the room has a license key prior uh, to when FXCM was added, uh, what about six months ago? Uh, they just need to let us know that they'd like FXCM enabled, and we will do that for free. Okay, great. Good news. All right, let's make this the last question, then we'll get back to the slides. Squeeze is asking, he says, I assume that the margin watcher feature will not work if the market moved against my position over the weekend. Good question, Squeeze, and, and thank you, because yeah, Squeeze Trader has had a lot of very good questions. Uh, so, yes, the liquidity is available from that 5 p.m. Sunday open to 5 p.m. Friday close. If there is a gap, which we've seen over the last few months, we've seen about one or two gaps on the Sunday open. Uh, then the close of the trade essentially will be mark to market at the opening. Uh, so you can see those gaps, and you are you are filled at the next best available price. So that's one of those scenarios where that no debit balance guarantee can be important in the sense that if there ever is a monster gap, which most of the gaps we've seen haven't been haven't been too large. I think the biggest gap we had was um, it was it was one of the Shinzo Abe Abenomics in, in Tokyo. Uh, one of their newest claims on how they're going to weaken the yen caused a pretty decent gap. But all that to say, uh, yes, it is the fills are taking place at the next best available price at market open. If that ever does happen to be at a point where it takes your account below zero, then that's when that no debit balance guarantee comes into place, we would bring the account back to zero. Okay, so the bottom line is, if there's ever a negative balance, you're not responsible. Correct. Okay. All right, so uh, we're only about 20 minutes behind now on questions. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get a few more slides and then we'll get back to the questions. Absolutely. So. Bouncing off of the trade size and how important that is for the overall effectiveness of your system or your manual trading strategy, we go into uh, the margins and lot sizes with spot effects. And just to give you kind of the increments uh, to pull it out a little bit more, uh, we do have, and, and I understand that there is the, um, you know, the ME6 and the ME7 and, and some of those um, you know, relatively newer options for many in micro trading and, and futures, but I just wanted to, to clarify this in the sense that on spot FX, the increments are 1,000 units, that's 10 cents per pip for different sections around the world, different kind of FXCM subsidiaries, and by that I mean like FXCM UK or FXCM Canada, uh, they do have different margin requirements. The two major ones that most traders come against is that 2% margin in the US. Uh, so that equates to roughly 50 to 1 leverage. Now as you can see down there, of course, leverage is a double-edged sword, something we must always say. But because the leverage is so great 
and as you can see outside of the US it's up to 200 to 1 uh, that's something that has a fixed margin and something I do also want to state here is the rollover so you have a fixed margin that's throughout the entire position and with that there is no overnight margin in spot FX so what happens is that when the trade is held past 5 p.m. Again, the margin stays the exact same throughout the life of the trade. When you close out the trade, of course, you get that margin back. But every day you hold the trade past 5 p.m., you earn a roll, what we call a rollover, on your account if you're on the positive side of the overnight lending rates. Now, I know that's some jargon and, and that's a little confusing, but it's, many of you are familiar with rollovers. And so what happens is that these are essentially two-day auto forward contracts and because of that and kind of to bounce off of Squee's question because the liquidity is not available for trading on the weekend on Wednesday at 5 p.m. so yesterday at 5 p.m. we pay triple rollover uh, and that accounts for Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, so what happens is margin stays the exact same the amount of margin you're paying is determined by your location essentially where you are providing a proof of residence when the account is set up. And then the rollover is automatically applied to the open position. Whether that is a credit or a debit depends on the side of the trade you're on. As an example, right now, the overnight borrowing rate for the Eurozone is less than the overnight borrowing rate for the US. So if you are buying EURUSD, then you are paying out roughly a dollar and 35 cents per 10k trade or 13 well, about 13 cents for a micro lot or 13 dollars and 50 cents per standard lot you pay that out because you're holding or you're buying the lower yielding trade if you are selling euro US dollar meaning you're selling euros and buying USD then you are then in fact holding the higher yielding of the two so that you would earn roughly 26 cents per 10k lot or two dollars and sixty cents automatically applied for every day you hold the trade past 5 p.m. now 5 p.m. is the important distinction here right so yes what happens if I open a trade at 4:59 p.m. is it still the full rollover if I carry it well past? If, if you carry it past yeah absolutely so the opening time does not matter. Okay. Uh, the, really, the only thing that matters is, yes, is the trade still open at that 5 p.m.? Okay. And if it is, then the rollover is earned or paid out, depending on the side of the trade. But if I, if I open a trade Monday at 5.01 p.m. and I close it Tuesday at 4.59 p.m., there's no rollover. Exactly right, Mike. Okay. So that is how margin and lot sizes work with spot FX. Again, we're trading in 1,000 unit increments, and that allows that flexibility that we were talking about earlier. Uh, this is something that, again, we feel is extremely helpful for strategies that maybe block up the orders or break them down, and that's something that we're definitely happy to communicate as well. Uh, so the next thing I want to discuss is FXCM as a company. Now, um, we've discussed how FXCM through our no dealing desk model is not taking the other side of the trade but I do understand from talking to traders over the years that the company you're trading with especially with what's happened in the futures market over the last few years um, with MF Global and PFG Best that the company is extremely important so I do want to talk a bit about FXCM as a company we are publicly traded mentioned earlier that the market started in 1999 that's when FXCM began trading now we went public in December of 2010 um, so I state that it's more about the exchange because it's important that you have a company that you're comfortable with I have a very good friend who is running a futures fund he's trying to build a great track record and had one going for about three years he had two very wonderful years following a, a channel trading system and really was just a year away from putting up some significant numbers um, that I think would make most hedge funds look modest but then John Corzine decided to go 30 to 1 on a bunch of what seemed like magic beans or European sovereign bonds um, and then once Greece had a technical default um, you know his, his account was essentially wiped out um, just on the basis of John Corzine's 
bets. Now, that was that was an individual scenario, but it was a private company and it didn't have the oversight that public companies have. Now, being a public company isn't the end all be all. It isn't the it isn't the um, you know the magic wand to make sure a company is well. Uh, so, all that to say. That's why I bring you to the fact that in addition to the fact that due to our execution model, we're not taking on risk. We are a publicly traded company. We go over and beyond to make sure that our financials are as transparent as possible because over the years, clients who have traded with us over the years really must have confidence in us to continue trading through us. And trading through us, executing through FXCM's liquidity feed is the only way we are compensated. So that's why financial stability is extremely important in addition to our execution for traders coming over in this market. We have Ernst & Young, naturally a top tier auditing firm, who we've chosen to come in throughout the year, make sure the books are sound. Um, I do want to share this with you. This is just from our investor relations page, something I want to type in here, um, but it is the link for our performance data. Uh, and another thing to show you, this just came out, um, this information just came out from the CFTC, um, but just shows you that, uh, that FXCM essentially kind of leads the way uh, based on the CFTC's latest posted figures for FXCM in January as far as client inflows of funds, just showing that confidence that's in the market. Uh, so it's important, I feel, for you to see what type of broker FXCM is within this new market to many of you. Uh, because a big question of a lot of people moving away from an exchange, even if it's just to test it out with micro lots, is how sound is the broker. Uh, so that's why to me it was important to discuss our execution method, that DMA. It's important to discuss the costs of trading, the fact that we're spread only compensated. It's important to discuss that we're a publicly traded company who has Ernst & Young come in regularly, look through the books, and then to me it's also important to share this data from the CFTC that just came out showing that of all the retail spot FX clients, our brokers, excuse me, spot F FCMs, that FXCM, Forex Capital Markets, the highlighted firm there, had the highest inflow of client funds during that time period. And then one thing Mike had mentioned earlier was that you know you have all of these different entities, uh, whether it's FXCM, FXCM UK, we also have FXCM Asia, Australia, FXCM Canada, which was mentioned earlier, and, and and it's important for you to understand that we are regulated in all of these jurisdictions. The reason why I say that is because I remember when I really first heard about currency trading as a legitimate retail market back in the early, really, well, I guess it was about 10 years ago, um, back when I was at J.P. Morgan. To me, it was, it was kind of known as the Wild West of you know, personal investing and trading, and it's no longer that way. Now, the CFTC and the NFA have had a lot to do with that. You had heard the... The Frank Dodd bill mentioned earlier that put a rein on some U.S. trading restrictions. Uh, if anything, that was really more meant for money managers, but it, but it, affected, it affected everybody. Um, so what's important here to state is that the confidence in FXCM is sound, I think, based on the regulations the world over, and then also based on the fact that a public, publicly traded company is continuing to bring in high amounts of capital funds for trading in this market. Last, last thing I want to state, mainly about FXCM is that on top of being a, really a top tier firm in this industry, spot FX trading, we are constantly rewarded for different things. Now, <laughs> uh, this is this is important, but obviously the proof is in the pudding. So it's something that um, I definitely encourage you to reach out to me or reach out to FXCM, ask any questions. That's why we're here today. Uh, but this is just to share with you. Uh, some of the awards that have been given to FXCM over the years. Of course, the most important thing, from my opinion, is how you feel about FXCM. So any questions you have about that, that really does sum up the presentation on the FXCM part. Uh, the next data is discussing NinjaTrader. Uh, okay. So we're welcome to go ahead and take some more questions, and if anybody has anything about the firm as a whole, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, let's get some of these uh, last questions knocked out. DW is asking, why do you liquidate all positions in the event of a margin call instead of only liquidating 
only enough of the position to maintain positive margin? It's a very good question, and that is our the the margin call method is an available method. We do have something called a smart margin, uh, in, in which it is something that actually happened or started in Canada, but essentially what it does is it gives you a margin warning once you hit a certain level, and then you can really properly liquidate within three days. Now, if you're still below your margin warning level, which is a zero usable margin, then we will liquidate all trades. So essentially we're giving you 72 hours, we're giving you roughly three days to manage the positions on yourself. So you can close out your largest losing position or you can add funds to the account, whichever you prefer. The base method is that is that full liquidation, uh, but the smart margin is currently available for U.S. clients. We're looking to make it available to other clients around the world. Uh, however, clients outside of the U.S. who do not have the smart margin available uh, do have much lower leverage requirements. So uh, the it's a very good question. That's our base method, but we do have other methods available for managing your margin. Okay, and that is something that is configurable within the client portal on the website? It's, it's exactly right, via myfxcm.com. That can be requested. Okay. AJ is asking if Ninja Traders auto strategies work the same using micro lots versus regular lots. Yes. Uh, Ninja, Trader, Ninja Traders auto strategies will, uh, and, and I think this, this is an important thing in the sense that um, regardless of your trade size, you get the same liquidity benefits, same trades, you know, same spreads and everything there. Um, the margin is down to scale, so uh, I would say, AJ, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, you just kind of covered this, but Michael is asking if his funds are safe at FXCM in case FXCM goes out of business like PFG. So we, we learned recently from PFG and MF Global, like you said, that uh, there is no such thing as, as FDIC insurance for futures accounts. So mm -hmm. let's say FXCM were to uh, go out of business tomorrow for whatever reason, right? the same is true. Is that correct? Yes. So, and I'm not sure where Michael is located. And if you're trading with FXCM UK, it is a regulatory requirement to be trading with a broker that allows segregated funds, which naturally we do. In a segregated, in a segregated fund type scenario, if any of you are trading with FXCM UK or plan to, essentially what's what is stated there is that client funds absolutely by law cannot be used in any type of bankruptcy liquidation procedure. Essentially, client funds are, as it says, segregated from FXCM operational funds. Now, it's an important thing to state, and I definitely would encourage you all to look at the CFTC website and look at our available net capital. The important things from my standpoint is, yes, as was shown by MF Global and PF you know, PFG best, that the, the funds are not segregated. That's, that's not a setup that is available within the U.S. Uh, an important thing to note, I would say, is the fact that FXCM does not take market risk. That's probably, in my opinion, right. the most important thing regarding MF Global. Regarding PFG best, I would say a publicly traded company that is audited regularly by Ernst & Young cannot get away with the same things that were done at PFG best. So, all that to say, in the U.S., there is nothing like segregated accounts. We do have we do have a lobbyist who is working to build segregated right. account structure in the U.S. because we want desperately that type of confidence for traders to have. Yeah, and uh, the, there's another gentleman uh, at FXCM Dallas that's posting on BMT. I can't call his name right now. Uh, is it Suhail? Does that sound right? Uh, no, there's somebody else that, that uh, is, is always involved in the forum and making people aware of you know, how to petition for certain changes or laws to be enacted. I, sounds like Jason Rogers, but we've uh, got a few. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's somebody else, but I'm not sure. Okay, anyway, um, one last thing on that. The, uh, I don't see anybody here asking, so I, I want to ask, is there any fee to withdraw money? take my profits and transfer them? Do you offer ACH withdrawals? Uh, what, what are my options? Yes, the, there are plenty of options. Wire is most popular mm -hmm. for larger accounts. The, 
fee only applies if you're withdrawing by wire and you have, I think it's below $10,000 in your account, we pass the wire fee on to you. If you have a premium account where you're getting those elite spreads we talked about, we cover the wire fee for you. I myself, on my personal account, when I'm withdrawing profits or account fees, I take it back through my debit card, which is, which is an option available in trading with FXCM. You can fund via debit card or credit card, or you can request an ACH, which can actually just goes straight to the account. Uh, paper checks are available, but it's a bit antiquated, so um, we try and steer towards ACH, debit okay. card or credit card, or wire. So, but there is no fee unless okay. there is a lower balance in the account and you're requesting a wire. So, okay, but if there, but for, for ACH, there's no fee? Absolutely not. Okay, awesome. Okay, Noah asking, is the, is the liquidity and price movement the same for standard lot and micro lots? The liquidity and price movement is yeah. the exact same. Yeah. Jeff asking, I think we had this question before too, but he, he's already using MetaTrader, which is you know somewhat popular, obviously, as you know, in the spot forex world, but he wants to use NinjaTrader, which is what's, ever, what's popular here. <laughs> In, uh, on BFT and what everybody here is, is in this presentation for. So he wants to use them both at the same time, and I forgot what you said needs to be done. They would need to be two separate accounts. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sarab asking, what's the minimum amount to open a micro account with FXCM? The smallest margin requirement is $20 on some of the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollars. So, I mean, I would say there really is no minimum because you can open up a, a micro lot, whereas the margin required is $20. Most of our clients are in the five to $10,000 ranges are getting started, but again, there really is no minimums. You are just you, find a trade size that works best for you. Are you saying that I can, I can open and fund an account with $20? Yes, you could. Okay. Not, not recommended. <laughs> not recommended but, oh, that's yes. interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see, he's also asking if FXCM is different than uh, Forex.com, which it is. That's that's a different broker, right? Well, and that, that would go back to the no dealing desk versus the market maker type of model. So if you, if you look at the trading agreement with Forex.com, also known as Gain Capital, right. um, and they're, they're a fine broker. They're, no, they're another publicly traded broker, and, and of course I'm not here to, to talk bad about anyone. What you will see on their trading agreement very clearly though is that as a dealing desk they can make money in the event of you're losing trades and they can lose money in the event of you making money on your trades. So there is that conflict of interest that uh, is, is what keeps some people at the exchanges and, and makes them not want to go to the spot FX in the first place. They, that is the main difference. They, they take the other side of the trade. That's something Correct. to be aware of. Okay, another question here. Uh, Okay, this is the same same comment as before. He's getting disconnected every night, it looks like, and that should not be happening. So that's something that maybe we can get an indicator to comment on a little bit later on uh, in the thread on BMT, uh, just to confirm that that's not happening or not supposed to happen or will be fixed or whatever the case may be. Gary's asking, why does FXCM's data feed to Ninja not include volume? There's another brokerage that does send volume for Spot Forex. Yeah, so so Interactive Brokers, uh, you know, offers options as well, and option really are the only way to track volume in the FX market. Uh, so the retail, because it's over the counter, right. we we don't know what the volume is from a between, let's say, a bank in Hong Kong and a, and a bank in Singapore. Uh, there's volume there that. That our liquidity providers are not tracking, uh, right. but with the with the vault, with the options market that can be tracked. If, if I can if I can state just on the on the previous question regarding the uh, API, uh, I remember uh, uh, Peanut was on the forum on the AMA forum and was I believe from Australia and, and so uh, VPS should help his should help his issues that he was having. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If it's due to his, his own internet connection, that makes a lot of sense. So regarding the volume question, I mean, we, we know that, uh, you know, it's a decentralized market, so it's not possible to know the entire volume, but let me ask, why, why do we not at least know 
FXCM's volume that it's sending to its banks? Why, why can't we get that figure? That's a, no, that's a, that's a very good question and something, I mean, I'm a trader myself, I would, I would like to see. I know that on dailyfx.com, which is our research website, we do take options data. Um, and my understanding, because that's a question that I had heard in the past, is because that the volume between the banks is, is not representative enough to, to really give pit, traders a clear picture of what's happening in the overall market uh, from one liquidity provider to FXCM. I, to me, I would still like to see it, and I know that yeah. because of that, daily FX uses options volume uh, because that's the clearest picture they feel of okay. retail trading. I know I, that, again, not a very good answer, and I would like to see volume myself, but that's my understanding. Okay. So about five or six more questions, then just a reminder to everybody that we'll be turning things over to Ninja Trader. They have something to show as well. Uh, and one real thing, one real quick thing on the volume, it would be entirely possible to just plot futures volume while trading spot forex, just an idea. Okay, Mike is asking, regarding a spread betting account, is that DMA, and is there any difference between spot forex and spread betting account other than tax laws? The spread bet accounts are definitely DMA. Uh, so they are they are on the no dealing desk as well. Uh, regarding the difference between spot FX and spread betting account, other than tax laws, you will know no other difference other than the fact that the broker is paying the taxes for you. Right. Okay. AJ is asking, will his NT? Okay. Okay. I think he's asking. He already has an, an integrator license. Will FXCM work with it? So Raymond mentioned earlier uh, in the presentation that if anybody would like to have FXCM enabled for their current single broker license of NinjaTrader, that all they need to do is email support at NinjaTrader.com and they will turn that on. Hopefully I got that right. Raymond can correct me if I didn't. Let's see. Mark is asking, he says, if I trade with FXCM, can I use the free license, free NinjaTrader license to trade stocks? with another broker in the U.S.? I'm not sure I follow. Maybe Raymond can answer that. Sure, yeah, I'm not 100% sure on, on, on his actual question there. He's asking, uh, you can trade with uh, your supported um, stock broker, equity broker, and FXCM at the same time, if that's the question. I think so. So. And, and it does not need to be a multi-broker license, right? Because you can simply request FXCM be added to the existing license. Did I get that right? That's correct. FXCM is, is covering uh, those, those costs so we can enable okay. that. So very important to know that it does not have to be multi-broker. So the answer is yes. Uh, Raymond, another Raymond, is asking if he can also fund the account with ACH. I think you mentioned that ACH was available, um, credit cards. What, else, what, are the, what are the other options to fund? Well, and I'm going to pull up a slide real quick. Um, I have to go through a few. Um, and I'm, okay, this, this doesn't mention in detail the different options, but uh, below 10000 in the account, below a $10,000 balance, we definitely do recommend uh, funding by debit or credit card. Uh, above 10, you can use ACH up to 50,000, uh, or you can use a wire. So those are the, those are the three main methods that are most, most popular. Okay. And just the last few questions, then we'll let, uh, let you continue. Uh, Satej is asking if NinjaTrader supports contract for difference quotes for UK accounts we already covered that. The answer was yes. Richard is asking, what is the super deal for today's webinar viewers? Okay, we'll get to that in just a minute. Jeff is asking if you can expand on your VPS service. Is it only available if you're a premium member, or, or how do you get that? It is available for all traders. Now, to get it for free, you need to have at least $5,000 in the account, which I believe aligns with the super deal from NinjaTrader, but uh, the VPS can be subscribed for by anybody, but there is a uh, account minimum to get it for free at no fee. Okay. Kenneth asking for the NinjaTrader email address. It was support at ninjatrader.com, 
And Raymond, do they need to put anything special in there to, to get their questions answered? Or? You know, just mention that they were in today's uh, FXCM webinar, and that way um, that will go straight over to me, and, and we'll get that answered. Okay. One last question, then we'll move on. Gary's asking, why does Ninja's static DOM not support spot 4x? Uh, okay, that's that's a good question. You're right. Uh, the due to the the legal setup um, that that I have or that we have Ninja Trader with uh, Trading Technologies, that's just unfortunately not available. It's only available for uh, futures, and that's why our dynamic dome is available for um, all instruments. Okay. All right. So how do we do this, uh, Tyler? Is is the rest of the presentation yours, or you tell me what to do here? I have a conclusion slide, if you will, uh, just to kind of wrap it all up, and then I was going to go ahead and hand it over to Ray. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, regarding this introduction to the spot FX market, I am not here to present this as this is the end-all, be-all market. Naturally, I believe it is, uh, but it's not about necessarily what is the best market for you, but I want to help you understand what each market offers, the flexibility uh, in costs, in trading, um, for algo trading, everything that, that comes with the market that you choose to trade. Um, either way, naturally we do feel that NinjaTrader will be a great platform you use to keep your trading edge. Uh, this is a quick list just to talk about some of the things that we grasp on, the, the true 24-hour trading. Uh, naturally there is no close for the exchanges. Uh, the Pricing is available. Again, um, we do have elite pricing available. So if anybody feels that they're trading high volume or they're going to be having a higher than average balance, and I would say really anything over ten or twenty thousand, uh, definitely reach out to us because we're all too happy to uh, negotiate the spreads that you're paying. And actually, we feel it's very important again to have the confidence in the broker and have a broker that you feel is giving you fair spreads for trading. Um, so not only will you not have to worry about the exchange and the clearing fees um, and the manual rollovers, but we'd also like you to have a broker who will offer you very fair and extremely competitive spreads in the market. And maybe we should just real quick clarify one more time so that you guys you guys don't charge a commission. Instead, you have what is called your spread, which is one pip by default, but you just mentioned that under many circumstances you can negotiate that downward, right? That's absolutely correct, and I, and I would, I mean, it's free to talk to us in the sense that if it's something that you're even considering, trading spot FX with FXCM and the NinjaTrader platform, I would definitely, and this is, just a, this is just to show you the spreads, I don't know if, those, if that's coming through clearly or not, but the spreads on some of the major pairs. Um, and so what I would at least recommend you do is talk to us, um, because balance is one way to do it, but volume is, in all, in all honesty, it's more important to us. Volume is much more important to us than balance. So uh, if you have the slightest inkling that you are going to be a high volume trader or a large client, at least ask us. It is free to ask if you can get the reduced spreads. Okay, great. Was there anything else, Tyler, or should we turn things over? I say that we should turn things over for... Ray, I just want to, again, just put up my contact information, so if anybody does need to reach out to me, uh, they are more than welcome to, and I do want to thank everybody for their time today. Okay, so uh, hang on, guys. I'll be turning things over to Raymond in just one second, and if anybody has any follow-up questions or did not get their questions answered today for FXCM, then you have a couple of choices. One of them is you could use the Ask Me Anything thread on BMT. The other one is uh, you can just email Tyler directly. Right there is his email address. And with that, I am turning things over to Ray right now. And I want to thank Tyler for his time today. Ty, uh, Tyler, you'll stick, stick with this just in case there's another question, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, hello, everyone. This is Raymond Stein of Ninja Trader. I think that I got my monitor showing here if you just want to. Uh, let me know, uh, Big Mike or Tyler. Yeah. yeah, we can see and hear you just fine. It looks good. Yeah, I can see it. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much, and um, thank you for letting me jump on, uh, uh, on the air here at the end. Uh, what I wanted to do here, and uh, Tyler had a great uh, presentation, 
Uh, we're very excited with this partnership with FXCM and uh, very thankful for them setting up, uh, taking care of the live uh, NinjaTrader license key for all of those, uh, all of you trading uh, and signing up for your FXCM account. So it's just an amazing offer to get started trading with NinjaTrader and FXCM uh, right away. So definitely get signed up for that. And again, if you do have any questions on uh, transferring your current license key over or getting set up with NinjaTrader, just email us, support or uh, sales at NinjaTrader.com. We'll be happy to get you set up and work uh, with you one-on-one -on -one as well. And uh, Mike, feel free to stop me as well if you, if, um, if you want to handle questions in the same okay. format as you did with Tyler. Sure. Perfect. So what we're going to start off with uh, today is uh, kind of from scratch. If you go to FXCM and sign up, you choose NinjaTrader uh, from the platform selection list there, and you get your account set up. What you're going to do is download NinjaTrader absolutely free uh, from NinjaTrader.com, and I know most people have done that uh, in the room today. Most people are using NinjaTrader, so uh, wonderful to um, see already. So we'll skip some of that step. But what you want to do is once you receive your account username and password, you're going to simply create a connection uh, to FXCM. As you can see, I'm connected right now. So you'll start off under the Tools menu here in NinjaTrader. This is the Control Center, of course, the first window you see when you start NinjaTrader. You'll come down to Account Connections. And you're going to come over and click on the Add button here in the upper right. So this will allow you to create your connection to your uh, FXCM account. So we'll click on Next. You can name the account anything uh, that you would like here. So you can name that uh, anything you want. Just type that in. And from the Provider drop-down menu, you'll choose, of course, FXCM. You can optionally, in all NinjaTrader connections, choose a backup connection if you would like for your data. And uh, Big Mike mentioned a, a good option before. If you do want data through our preferred data pr uh, provider Kinetic, uh, you can sign up at Kinetic.com um, and use the end of day, uh, data absolutely free. So that is always available to you uh, as another option for data. Okay, so you go through and you'll leave uh, historical data. You use FXCM servers. Okay, and we'll go ahead and click on Next. Nope, I already have my connection by that name. So we'll click on Next. And here's where you'll put in your actual username and password provided to you uh, by uh, FXCM. So you go ahead and put in the username, the password. You'll skip the PIN. Um, that's just a, an internal item that we may use. Um, and if you do have a demo account currently, you click on Demo to finish your account. Okay, and then you'll click Next, and I'll just put in some uh, dummy information here. And then you'll just click on Finish, and your new account connection will be available. Now, some of the items we discussed earlier and questions you may have, we do have a disclaimer here uh, just based on some of the limitations, of course, of, of any API. So it tells you that uh, chart data, we do use the bid price since there's no real last price in the uh, Forex market. Um, and then you can read through here uh, some of the items we were looking at before. Uh, we do not have any sort of disconnect time. So I know some of you that are asking if there was a server reset. Uh, um, Tyler let you know there was not. So uh, we do not have that, so again, if you have any issues with getting disconnected, let our support team know. Great support team can help you out. So you want to read through some of these items. Um, we do I also um, have the OCO orders with FXCM. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to ask you about. Uh, some because I want to look at there. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I thought that uh, Tyler said that uh, they support server-side OCO, and that disclaim disclaimer said it was client-side OCO. Uh, I see. You know... That's, I think you caught us here in an update. So on NinjaTrader version 12 just came out. You may have seen that. And in the release notes there, we do support uh, the server-side OCO with FXCM. Okay. So Perfect. my guess here is that just this little disclaimer might be a little outdated. So that's a good one there. I'll mark down. Um, but if you look at the, uh, the R12 release notes, uh, you'll see the OCO information in there. Okay. Thanks. Perfect. All right. Good question. Absolutely. Um, so now that we have that connection set up, simply go to File Connect and then choose your connection. And I'm connected here uh, to my account. So one thing I want to show you before we get into the charts here is under Tools Instrument Manager, uh, you'll have access to all of your, uh, we call them currency, but of course your Forex instruments. And so you'll see those here. And what I wanted to point out is we did have a lot of questions about the CFD instruments. And you'll see uh, we have... Um, 
put in here many of the popular CFD instruments. So you can see um, some of the ones you go through here. And if we just type in the description CFD, it's actually going to list all the ones built into NinjaTrader. And uh, if you're familiar with NinjaTrader, you know you can actually add more here as well. So if XCM, your account supports more, you can actually uh, just click on New and create that instrument. So you can see the ones we have here. And I've added the uh, oil and U.S. dollar CFD that were on this list to my uh, instrument list just by clicking on the left uh, arrow button here. And I'm going, I know, quickly through if you're brand new to NinjaTrader, but we do offer tons of uh, education and support uh, on how to do uh, some of these items. So we'll kind of go quickly through those. But head over to NinjaTrader.com if you do need uh, education on that uh, free webinars daily. So here we've got uh, a sample workspace set up. So you'll see that all of the windows in NinjaTrader will work here with your FXCM uh, connection. I've got the Superdome for those of you that like to trade in the price ladder on the left. Let me bring up here our FX Pro window as well um, for uh, Forex traders. So we do have that window. It's got the traditional um, uh, quotes here, the Forex quotes for you. And then we've got Chart Trader over to the right here, the uh, I'd say one of the most primary order entry windows in NinjaTrader. Um, and you see I've got the US Yen here and all the different instruments. So you know I do want to bring up one of those CFDs as well. And there's there's something that I oil. that I noticed right away. There is volume. So <laughs> yes, when we were when we were going through those questions, I did put up, um, I did uh, add the volume indicator. So you know, NinjaTrader is getting some volume information through the FXCM a, um, API. Uh, however, like Tyler said, it's probably not the full information. Uh, but I just wanted to see what was available there, and again, that's something we can look through. What's what's okay. coming through that API? So you know, I wasn't, I didn't have time to compare it to um, uh, to the FXCM website to see what we may be receiving. Um, and I know that some traders use the average true range as well. But um, Big Mike, you had a good suggestion on using the uh, futures um, uh, forex futures as well to compare volume. Which, of course, with the Ninja Trader, you can connect to your multiple accounts to do that. So. That was a great suggestion, um, but I just did want to show you quickly here that uh, you know all of the features will will work. Of course, your ATM strategies um, over to the right to build your targets and stops. All of the chart features. I know we had some chart questions on will all the indicators and things like that work. Uh, so yes, absolutely, those will work. Your market analyzer and uh, of course the full uh, automation as well um, on fully you know automating your strategies. And that doesn't matter what uh, you know what size account you have. Your micro. Uh, mini uh, or full size as well. So all of those features uh, will work with you today. So, uh, Mike, did, were there any questions um, I should yeah. pause for at the moment? Yeah, and we should also, one more time, just to remind everybody that the CFDs are only available to customers outside of the U.S. Okay, let's Absolutely. see. Absolutely. We have a question from Jeff. Jeff's asking, is there any way to bracket orders with NinjaTrader other than using the DOM. He doesn't want to use the DOM. Uh, very good question. Absolutely. We've got uh, the chart trader here, I would say, is the most popular order entry window. So let me bring this one a little bit more into view here. So you can trade right inside of your chart and use what we call ATM, Advanced Trade Management Strategies. And uh, what I'd like to do is let me just throw a quick link in uh, for the uh, Ninja Trader training events. We have hour-long events. That way, you know, I know I'm just just have a few minutes uh, to show you this, but I'll throw this in the room to everyone. But basically, I'll create a quick uh, ATM strategy here. You click on the the button here to the right. You see, I'm trading right now in the micro lot, um, so 1,000 units here. And then you can click on custom, and this is where you create your bracket. So. Uh, real quickly here, you can set your stop loss and profit targets to the pip amount that you want. So, you know, for example, if we just want a 10 pip stop, maybe a 20 pip target, we type those in, and you can have multiple targets and stops here. I'm just going to right click, and you can save your strategy. Just call this my Forex One strategy. Save and OK. And this is a very basic strategy, but it, as you can see, it just takes few seconds to set up. And there we've got a bracket right inside our chart. Uh, I can zoom in on that for you here uh, with our, our target up above and our stop down below, uh, 10 pips away and, and 20 pips away. So we do have full um, automation of the management of your strategy uh, through the ATM feature 
Uh, and again, see that link I just put in for the ATM Level 1 and 2 courses, full hour-long courses. And we do have a YouTube channel as well where you can uh, watch those events um, on your own uh, time also. Okay. Squeeze is asking, uh, he says he enters limit orders with the stop and target every time he initiates a position. And then he'll add if it starts moving in his direction. But he has different stops and targets for the ad. Is there any way to make sure that when the target or stop of the ad is hit, that it will not buy or sell the lot from the initial position? Okay, good question. I, I believe I understand um, what's going on there. The ATM strategies, and this is a little bit more technical. We talk about this in our in our courses, but real quick to answer that question. Um, if you right click in your chart trader or your order entry window, we've got a property called ATM strategy selection mode. And uh, yours may be set to, it sounds like yours may be set to keep selected ATM strategy. And what this does is every time you enter a limit order, it enters a separate set. You can think about it as a separate strategy, a separate set of targets and stops. Um, that's what it sounds like is happening to you. So you can actually set that to select uh, the active ATM strategy on order submission. And what that's going to do is just add to your current uh, strategies, targets, and stops. So if I right click now and put in additional buy limit orders here, if I were to get filled, and I'll just modify this up to get filled. Uh, if we get some volume in here, I'll bring that up to the ask price. But what you'll see here, once we get to a tick in, is it's going to just add to the current target and current stops. So you'll see those move to 2,000. Um, once we get a tick in here, the Ninja Trader simulation engine does use a tick volume into play here, so it'll wait for a tick to come in and then get us a fill. So if that doesn't answer your question, um, just email support at ninjatrader.com and we'll, we'll definitely help you out. Okay. DW asking, when did NinjaTrader 7.12 uh, come out? Oh, that's a very good question. Let's go ahead and uh, if I press F1, it's going to bring me to our help guide. Um, and it's also available online, but just press your F1 key. And the release notes I was referring to before are located here on the right. Um, so there you go, released on March 7th. Okay. Okay, uh, so there you go, and you'll see all the different release notes in there. I'll let you know. yep. Okay. Satej asking, he says it's a challenge that he finds. Uh, he was never able to use NinjaTrader from behind a corporate firewall, which supports an HTTP proxy. He's very easily able to configure another platform to do that. So how, how can he use NinjaTrader behind a, a proxy or a firewall? You know, that's a, a great question. And, of course, it's um, each individual corporate firewall we have to look at and try to, try to set up those settings for. So if you haven't done so, email our support team. You know, they'll log into your computer and uh, try everything we can to get through your corporate uh, firewall. And, you know, of course, those are local settings, um, and we'll do our best to get through. We know we, we do help a lot of traders get through those those firewalls, so definitely try our, our uh, support team. Right. I'm speaking completely out of turn here, but isn't there in the program files uh, directory under uh, NinjaTrader 7 uh, binary, there's an NinjaTrader.exe.config that supports a proxy setting, at least from memory. So anyway, worth a shot. Email email uh, NinjaTrader support. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, let's see. Does uh, Jeff asking, does FXCM have first in, first out restrictions? That's something that Tyler might need to answer. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and they do for U.S. traders. That was part of the Dodd-Frank rulings that came out in October of 2010. So it's, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a chronological execution. So if you have three Euro USD positions open. When you go to exit those positions, you must close them out on a first in, first out basis. Right. Okay. Claudio asking, what is the minimal size contract that can be traded with FXCM with con contract for different CFDs? And so for those, it's going to be, you know, usually what we consider like for gold, it's going to be one ounce. Um, you know, for SPX 500, it's going to be it's going to be one one contract. Uh, so we, it, kind of like what you saw with micro lots, we bring it we break it down to the the smallest available size possible to give you the most flexibility in your trading. Okay. 
All right, and uh, Raymond, we see that you got filled and you're at 2,000 now. Does anybody have any other questions about the NinjaTrader side of things and how to get FXCM hooked up, how to get FXCM enabled uh, with your license or any other questions? Okay, I think that uh, with our two-hour long webinar, we've actually answered everybody's question, <laughs> which is good. So this will serve as a nice reference that I can point people to and people can check out uh, at a future date to uh, pretty much answer every, every single question. So, uh, Ray, was there anything else that you wanted to show us? You know, um, I showed you know the, some of the basics of of the platform, but I did want to um, let everyone know about uh, you know a special offer we put together just for everyone in the room today. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and bring that up now. Since uh, FXCM uh, partnership, they are covering the NinjaTrader license fees. So of course, you know, there's no uh, no promotion we can offer there when you sign up with FXCM you get the standard, you know, the NinjaTrader license key for free. Now, what we have done recently, if you are in the NinjaTrader email list, is we have our brand new uh, NinjaTrader Premium Education events. Uh, these are actually brand new. Uh, the first one, the very first one is uh, coming up here, as you can see. Um, so these are absolutely brand new events, uh, seeing how these are, are going. And what they're designed to do is to take you into 12-hour um, long uh, session. So it's six hours on Saturday, six hours on Sunday. For those of you interested in really learning uh, the steps to creating a full automa automated strategy from the theory um, through stepping it through NinjaTrader uh, to backtesting, optimizing, and we've got two courses so far. We've got the strategy creation for those of you that are not interested or just getting started with programming. NinjaTrader offers a flexible, very powerful strategy wizard. Uh, so that you don't have to do the programming yourself. And then we also have more advanced actual introduction to uh, NinjaScript development, and that's actual C-sharp programming. So uh, we've known that clients have asked uh, for a long time for an actual programming course, and so um, to offer that, you know, it's a full six to eight hours on Saturday or Sunday to fully answer your questions in a classroom setting. Uh, tons of examples, and we answer your questions as well. So it's really an amazing event. We've just been testing it out, and our team just went through it, uh, learned a lot about that event. So uh, for today, everyone in attendance today, uh, what I want you to do is actually uh, email me directly. And uh, let me go ahead, and I'm just going to type in uh, my email here, raymond.stein at ninjatrader.com. And uh, what I want you to do is put in the FXCM. Big Mike webinar, just let me know that you were in today's event, and I'll make sure that you were in today's event, and we're going to offer you uh, a very special discount uh, on these courses right now. Uh, I know that we are only having 20 people sign up uh, per course to keep it very personal so that you learn as much as you can. Um, so email us today, and we'll give you a discount uh, on those premium education events. So we did want to offer that to everyone in the room today. Okay. And with that, I think it's a good place to end. So I'd like to thank Tyler once again for a uh, very great presentation and especially for answering everybody's questions. And Raymond for uh, chiming in and answering all the NinjaTrader questions along the way, plus showing us how to get started with FXCM and NinjaTrader. So if anybody has questions that were not answered today, uh, you can get a hold of FXCM on their Ask Me Anything thread on BNT. You can just go to the top right of BNT, type in AMA space FXCM, that'll get you right to that thread. Uh, you can also uh, just email or use their website. If anybody has questions for NinjaTrader, you can use their website or you can contact support at ninjatrader.com. And last, I'd like to remind everybody that the recording for this will be posted sometime tomorrow on BNT. All right, guys. I really appreciate everybody's time, and I'll see everybody on the forum. Mike, thanks for having us. Have a good day. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Take thanks. care.